our goal is to have a farm that's viable 25 years from now. You know, we gotta save the dirt, we gotta have clean water, it all plays into that. Water quality, we feel, is very important. We're just trying to make the land better now than it was when we got it. Like I say, it's just really nice to come out here after a hard rain and see that there's no damage. Not seeing a whole bunch of gullies and dirt going down the river. And it's not only benefiting me, but benefits the people down below. I'm Kevin Keener with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. I'm a soil scientist. Since 2009, I've been working on the Root River Field to Stream Partnership. The purpose of the project is to produce a better understanding of how agricultural practices affect water quality. Starting in 2009, we installed equipment in the streams. Within the watershed, we also picked one or two locations where we're actually measuring field runoff from actual fields. Really the first six years with this project is to get a science-based information on how much runoff is happening and when it's happening. And the second phase of the project is to work with producers to install additional practices to see what effect it may have on the water quality. One of the key findings that we learned during the first seven years of the study is that on average about 7% of the precipitation that fell on the monitor fields ran off the surface. And this amount varied by site and by year. Uh, and in a dry year, we found less than 1%. And in a wet year, we found nearly 25% run off the field surface. So how we manage this runoff you know, can have a big impact on the water quality of a receiving stream or river. Uh, the data also showed that our fields are really most susceptible to uh, loss in May and June. And what we found was that about 80% of the annual soil loss and over 60% of the nutrients attached to that soil occurred in those two months. And in most cases, it was a relatively small area of the field that was responsible for most of this loss. So targeting these critical source areas at the right place and at the right time, and also making sure that you know our existing conservation practices are, are working properly, um, were really key pieces of information that were used by uh, the partnership to help guide the approach used during the field walkovers. I'm Ron Miners, I'm a private contractor and I was asked to come in uh, and help with the walkover process on the Field to Stream Partnership project. A project like this needed to start with conversations uh, with the landowners to get started. And once we had that behind us, we uh, physically walked the tracts of land trying to identify resource needs. We wanted to know if they would be willing to address the highest priority site that we saw on the farm. We didn't want to overburden them with a whole bunch of work. We wanted to make it simple for them. Landowner participation rate in the field walkovers was an incredible 98%. And within just two years, over 60% of those cooperators had already addressed or are in the process of fixing their high priority areas on their farms. We still have more work to do, but that speaks volumes about the farmer's commitment to help improve water quality in these study watersheds and we are very thankful to those cooperators. What I also learned from doing the field walkovers is that farmers already have a lot of practices in place and most are in really good condition, but about a third of those practices, especially the grass waterways, were not functioning properly and needed additional maintenance. The waterways require maintenance, obviously, as, they, as they're doing their job and, and catching sediment and the silting, uh, they need reshape every 10 years is probably a, not a average number, but uh, as you go from farm to farm, it varies on what kind of tillage you're doing. If they're doing no-till and uh, that type of thing, that's a huge impact on the life of the waterway and our life of the structures and the sediment that they have to collect. My name is Josh. Uh, Steph and I farm here together with my parents, uh, Joyce and Jerry and we have uh, 150 milk cows, and we farm 420 acres of cropland. When uh, Kevin and Ron came out and to talk about doing the walkovers, I was open to it. I mean, I think it helps to have a different set of eyes to look at uh, the practices that we have been doing. And I think uh, after Ron did the walkover, we had discussed the high priority areas. 
agreed that the manure pit that we had, which was a 20,000 gallon manure pit, which would fill up in five days, was something that would really need to be replaced. When that uh, 20,000 gallon pit would fill up in five days, you know, we would have to just load up and whether the conditions were right or anything, we would have to go and apply that manure. So the project that we're putting in, it's a 1.9 million gallon all concrete manure storage with a ramp to drive down in, into the pit to help with the sand. With the way our numbers are right now, it's something that we can just uh, empty in the fall and get all of our manure applied in the fall and we can get it incorporated right away and be able to utilize the manure for fertilizer as opposed to almost treating it like a, like a waste. Uh, Dave Metzink, uh, we farm here with my son and my wife and, and daughter-in-law in Caramona Township. We raise corn, soybeans, oats, hay, and from a livestock standpoint, we raise hogs. I have a 90 cow beef herd. Ron came out and described the project and waterways were, on these two farms we had, waterways were the vehicle to use for the conservation uh, to do our part. We liked the looks of it and we liked the way it all turned out. And you know, one thing that you don't think about when you put in a water, waterway, it'd give us a natural contour line to start our corn planting. So we actually farm the farm a lot better now than we did before that waterway was there from a, from a row crop standpoint. You know, and it's a, it's a fine line. We want to be environmentally correct, but we have to be economically correct too. I know that there's water monitoring down in the creek and so it'll be interesting to see and, and look at the data over the years to see how much have we improved that water quality. It excites me when landowners can come together as a group and talk amongst each others and see the benefits from a project like this. I think this project has really helped elevate the conversation in terms of, of conservation and, and farming. Without having good science-based information, it's difficult to have a, a good conversation about water quality and, and ag practices. And so as producers put more practices on the ground, it provides, I think, another opportunity to showcase the benefits of those practices. Our goal is to make it better than, than when we found it and leave the land for the next generation.